A Door into Ocean by Joan Slonczewski. Nailed that last name. All right, this is the 11th book that I've read in a series I'm doing called The Masterpieces of Science Fiction. There's 140 books in the list, and with 11 down, uh, that leaves 129 left to go. Now, this is the first book I've read from Joan, and before I started digging in on this list, I hadn't even really heard of her as a science fiction author, or even an author in general. And I heard Matt from Science Fiction Reads talk about this book, and so it kind of intrigued me, and it bumped it up on the list, and I decided to go ahead and give it a go. I gotta say, Joan's writing is amazing. The, the book itself has some pros and cons. Overall, I really enjoyed it. Um, it was written in 1986, I believe, and it's about a 400-page book. That being said, let's get into the book review. And this is going to be a hard book to review. I'm going to try to do as best I can, and what I'm going to start off with is just the setting of this book. So, this takes place way distant future from where we are now, but it seems, and a lot isn't given, but you can kind of piece together some of the, the concepts and the setting. And what, what seems to happen was humans left Earth and expanded across the galaxy, maybe even beyond. And this book takes place in a solar system where there's two planets that actually are interlocked and revolve around each other. And one is called Shora, and this is a water planet. It's completely covered by oceans. And it's inhabited by an all-female race of kind of evolved humans that have adapted to this ocean world. So they have some webbed feet and hands. They've, they've stopped growing fingernails. And they have a way to reproduce with only being females. The other planet is called Validin, and this is a planet that seems very Earth-like with normal humans that you would recognize and seems very familiar to us as we are today. There's not a lot of technology really beyond where we're at now. They have some space travel and some basic uh, technology, but really it actually feels like a, a society that, that's living maybe a hundred years past from where we are today. And what's interesting is each planet considers the other one a moon of it. So Validin, the kind of Earth-like planet, calls, um, calls Shora the water moon. And Shora, their, their inhabitants, called Validin the Stone Moon. Now, there is a patriarchal system of leadership that is... Um, the, the headquarters, I guess you would say, is about four light years away on some other planet. And they send a key representative every nine years to check on Validin and check up check up on the planet and see how it's doing. And where when we start this story, this main person is is on their way to visit Validin and do one of these nine year check-ins. Now the two planets had mostly been separated, but it seemed like recently there was a trade system set up, mostly with the inhabitants of Validin going up to Shora and setting up some trade with them because the, the inhabitants of Validin, they had this sea silk that was really valuable and they would trade it to these um, inhabitants of Validin mostly for steel and other things. Now the, the book actually goes, there's a lot more culture there's so much more that's that's built. The world building in this is is really good. the the way they the way that Joan uses or explains the world building is is something we're very familiar with because the, one of the main premises of this book is 
a male inhabitant from Valadin gets a chance to go up to Shora and spend time with these women and almost be int introduced and um, taken into their culture. So they can explain to this male inhabitant everything that's going on with their world and their culture. And it seems like, a, you know, it's a very easy way of explaining all of this without just big data dumps. So that was done really good. And it's a, it's a way that we've all seen used a lot for, for explaining this very alien world because it is quite alien. Now, the thing about these inhabitants of Shora, which is kind of a, the very essence of the theme of this book, is that they are completely pacifist to the, to the extreme, to where they would rather die than harm something, most of them. There's all, they're also very, very holistically tied to their planet. There is concepts where someone came down and said, well, this is a weed or, you know, we can get rid of this. And they stop them and say, no, no, everything on, the, on our planet is linked. They cap their population at around a million. They believe in this kind of reincarnation where when you die, it makes room for the next soul to come in and they kind of keep a control on their population that way. Now there are some things that happen in this book without giving any spoilers away that create this conflict between the traders that are on, on Shora from Valadin. We also have this like emissary coming from the corporate world who want some things answered or investigated, which creates a lot of conflict. And you have these inhabitants of Shora who just sit back and try to live through this. And that is the main theme of this book. So I don't really want to say too much else about the plot of the book. I think I think the, I think anything else would kind of spoil it for anyone who really wants to give this book a go because I, I think you should. I think if you're in the right frame of mind, in the right place to read something like this, and I'll go over the pros and cons and maybe who will read this, I think you should definitely pick this up. So let's, I guess let's just get into the pros and cons. So the pros for this book, the world building, the character building I thought was fantastic. The, the, when you first read this book or read the, even the synopsis, there's kind of this feminism tag put onto it. And I'm, I'm okay with that to a point. I don't want, I don't want anything really preached to me too much, but as long as these themes are brought up in a, a very, interesting way that gets that gets you to look at the other side maybe in a different way. I'm all for it. And this book did an amazing job of that. What I thought could have been a negative turned out to be not an issue at all. When you think of these women on this planet who who are complete pacifists and and Joan I think wants them to be the star of this show, you would think Maybe the idea is that men are evil, but if you read this book, you'll understand that's not the point of this book. One of the worst characters in this book, the most horrific character doing the worst deeds, is a female from the Earth-like world of Valadin. And I did some research after finishing this book, and Joan mentioned that she she purposely did that because she didn't want that that thought that that she's just a man hater or something like that. So if if you're worried about that in this book, don't worry about it. It's it's not an issue. It's it's just the setting of the book. These these women inhabit this planet, and I also forgot to mention Joan is a biologist, and the amount of biology and 
that she, that she puts around this culture is is really cool. And if you're into science and biology, it's it's another major pro for me. Another pro I would say is the her writing style is just amazing. It it read like a fan it read in a fan like a fantasy book in how easy it was to read. I think considering how like alien this culture was, but it 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 doesn't it's not really a fantasy book, but it just it was just a pleasure to read these. There was just a really good prose, really good pacing. All of that was done really well in my mind. Now let's get into some negatives. And there's probably some potential trigger warnings for people in this negative section. It is frustrating to read and care about these characters and this culture and then have them just be, you know, stomped down by their oppressors and refuse to do anything to stand up for themselves. Now, that's that's kind of the theme of this book. It's I don't think it's really a spoiler. I'm not going to say if they ever fight back or, or whatever happens there, but it can be really frustrating just seeing someone getting their teeth kicked in for a while and, and do nothing. But it's the point of this story. If you wonder what it's like to be in the mind of a pacifist, I think Joan paints a very realistic interpretation of this. Like, I could never see myself putting up with that amount of torment. But the way she has these characters explain it, it makes a lot of sense. And it makes me think maybe I'm not as good of a person as some of these women were here on this planet. There was some scenes that got a, a little bit into some rape areas. So if it, it wasn't graphic, it wasn't really described, but if, if you're sensitive to those kind of things, I would probably steer away from this book. Um, but it was just part of that oppression of these validins who came in and and, you know, tried to put these women under their boot heels. So there was some scenes that were kind of hard to stomach in that regard. And the ending and overall, the, the way the conflict was resolved was not exactly to my liking, but after finishing it and understanding what Joan was trying to do with this book, I think she did a great job with it. So I think I think that's about it for pros and cons. Now, if you are into science fiction and you haven't read this book, I, I would say wait until you've read some maybe lighthearted things and you're ready for something a little deeper, something that might make you feel a little uncomfortable, and then give this book a shot. I think if you start reading this, it sucks you in pretty quick. It's, it's you're just it's a page turner in the fact that you're always kind of trying to figure out more of the culture and and the conflict. The conflict is like this slow burn. And I won't talk about the resolution cuz that could be a potential spoiler. So overall, I really enjoyed the book. Glad I read it. I know there's four books in this um, series. I, I, I'm pretty sure they're, they're loosely tied. So I don't think I want to move right into those books in the near future. I think I'm going to keep cracking on my list and throwing some other books in the mix. But with Joan's writing, I'm definitely going to be on the lookout for some of her other science fiction novels and try to pick them up and eventually read the other three books in this series. So yeah, so that's that's where I'm at there. I think this is a, a solid four-star book for me. And I think if any of that sounds interesting to you or you just want to get into something a little different, this is probably right up your alley. And let's see, the next book I'm going to read, I needed something a little bit 
lighthearted after that book. So I am going to read What Mad Universe by Frederick Brown. I know Frederick Brown is uh, kind of more known for some of his mystery, but he's written some science fiction. And from what I can tell, they're a little more lighthearted, uh, comedy thrown in. This book was written in 1949, so... And just looking at the cover and looking at that little alien guy, I think this is going to be a nice, quick palate cleanser for me. So that's about it for this video. I thank you for watching and we'll see you in the next video.